Good evening, hello boys and girls. Uh, we continue with our topic which is uh, types of computers. Today we're going to continue, we're going to talk about the types of computers. I think uh, the last lesson we talked about the classification and uh, we talked about personal computers, workstations, mini computers, supercomputers and mainframe computers. Okay, now we want to move on to personal computers. We're going to, I'm going to explain type by type. So looking at the personal computers, uh, this was created in 1981. The first small computer which was called a personal computer. Why was it called a personal computer? Because it was one of the smallest computers which reached the home. Most of the computers, uh, according to the history of computers, they were only industrial computers. But now looking at um, the small size of, uh, of this computer, it was called personal computers because it reached all corners and all types of so types of people in the society the rich the poor and the middle class they all managed to use their computer okay looking at the first one we have uh, the tower model okay let me just get my pointer uh, we've got the power the tower model tower is mainly because it looks like a do you know the tower lights example in our zones there we've got some tower lights which just reflect light in the streets so it's it's a pole long one and there's a light here that's why it's called a tower light so we also have tower computers uh, which are the ones we we are using right now uh, we have in the computer lab those are tower computers they are tall that's why they are called tower why are they called tower sorry they are called tower because inside they we can slot in the power supply, we can slot in the hard disk drive, we can slot in the CD-ROM drive and the other parts of a computer which are inside. And there are a lot of advantages. Or well, Before we go to that, let's just read here. The term refers to a computer which the power supply, like I said, the motherboard, the mass storage devices are stacked onto each other in a cabinet so this is in contrast to a desktop model in which in which these components are housed in more compact box we'll talk about that later so the advantages of having a tower computer first fewer space constraints when you talk about uh, space constraints it means the computer feels very very happy and very comfortable because each component inside that computer it's on its own it's not compacted it's not uh, squeezed within the other components because a computer when it's working it produces some heat so there's enough circulation of air inside the computer in a tower case okay then we also have uh, it also makes installation and additional storage devices easier it means when you want to do some maintenance especially when you want to clean some dust this is the best computer to clean dust. It's very easy because the space inside even for circulation of air. Then it also saves uh, desk space. As you can see, it's now, now depends with you. You can put it on top of your desk or you can put it under your desk. So you can even save more space if you put it under your desk and it's much flexible. And there is enough ventilation like I was saying. Air can circulate very, very well inside the computer because it has got some space and it's easy to clean like i was saying dust dust is not very good inside uh, the computer what happens with the, with the dust when you have uh, too much dust in your computer it creates what we call false contact so what will happen it may contact some electricity and it's going to join two components or either on the motherboard and it's going to create a false contact when you clean that dust your computer is going to get down it's going to have some problems so sometimes that false contact can help the computer to work but once you clean that dust it's going to be down so it's always wise to clean up your computer so that you don't have those false contacts and sometimes besides creating false contacts it can damage your computer there are some uh, components inside the computer like a motherboard it has got some holes for ventilation or for um, respiration so if the dust blocks those ones it can create some problems 
Then we have the the most common one uh, called the desktop. Even these ones, people they call them desktop, but generally they are not desktop. These are called tower computers. As you can see, they stand tall. So this is what we call the tower part. So if you look at this other computer we have here, this one is actually the desktop. A computer designed to fit comfortably on a desk, typically with a monitor sitting on top of the computer. These are these computers are no longer been they are not we no longer have them in the market because they occupy a lot of desk space as you can see. It means on top of a desk you have to put another computer, then it will be much higher as you can see here. I don't like them. Practically principally myself I don't like them. It depends with the, the user. Then then we also have um desktop models computers are broad. As you can see, broad now we mean this part here is quite wide and uh, low. Whereas, okay, low, we are actually talking about this part here now, which is quite low. Whereas, tower computers are narrow and tall. Okay, let's go back to the tower computers. Tower computers are narrow, narrow in the sense here. Yeah, as you can see here, yeah, the width is quite narrow, then the height is longer then looking at these now desktops they have a wide they are broad here and very small here on the on the height but now these computers they come up with a lot of problems as you can see everything is compacted inside here there is no enough space for ventilation the space is very difficult here uh, sorry air circulation is very difficult although a computer brings in some fans but still it still creates some uh, problems of air circulation so you actually you need an air conditioner for these computers to work perfectly without any problems then um, as you can see okay let's continue with the other point because of their shape desktop model computers are generally limited to three internal mass storage devices they are limited to three which are the three uh, devices we're talking about the hard disk which is abbreviated as HDD the hard disk is the component which stores some information inside our computer. So you can have one this hard disk, you can have another hard disk again. Then you can also have another storage device which is a CD-ROM, either a CD or a DVD. So these are the other components. So it's actually limited to this. But looking at this type of uh, tower computer now, it has more space. As you can see, you can put, for example, we've got one CD here. One DVD. Let's not talk of uh, CD. It's already out of fashion, but it's still running. Okay, we can talk of a CD and DVD ROM. Yeah. Then inside here you can have one hard disk here, and you can have another hard disk. You can have the third one here, and you can even have the fourth one, depending with them. These tower computers they have more space, as you can see. And as you can see, we can still have another expansion. You can make some fixes here, so that you can put five more hard drives here or storage devices or if you want to put two cd roms here it's okay one cd rom one dvd rom here is still okay it has got some space as compared now to this desktop computer you can only have one cd rom or dvd rom which can be fitted here then you can only have one more space for a hard disk inside here or another hard disk here at the second one then that's it there is no more space inside the, the computer then the cleaning part of this computer is uh, quite difficult. Sorry, my phone is actually making some noise. I'm going to put it on silence. Okay, then you also have uh, some problems of, uh, what do you call this one? Uh, space. There is no, it's very difficult to clean inside this type of computer. Because once you open this top, you're going to get a lot of components. So in order to get to the bottom of this, you're going to remove some of the components inside your device so that you can clean them so it's quite difficult to clean especially if you are not a technician don't even try to open it because once you make any mistake there your computer is not going to, to be working so try to call a technician to do some cleaning or which is called some maintenance okay then desktop models are designed to be very small and are sometimes referred to as slim line models Okay, slim, they are designed to be small as you can see because they have to fit on top of the desk. 
one disadvantage if your desk is very small you cannot put that one or it will occupy a lot of desk space okay as you can see it's already occupying your desk from here to here then you're going to put a keyboard again on top of your desk then you also need some space for example if you are typing something on paper you also need space to put your paper here so as you can see there is no more desk space here it occupies a lot of desk space and it's very difficult to take this one down it's not it's not suitable it's not meant to be under the desk but on top of your desk so that's what we call a desktop model then we have another type of computer which is called a notebook okay I'm going to classify these three because they are the same they work exactly the same the only difference is the size and the some of the capabilities some of them they have better specifications than other computers but they are basically the same so we have a notebook a laptop and a sub notebook okay a notebook and a laptop there is actually no difference between the two if you look at them if you don't have knowledge of IT you may not be able to distinguish between those two why if you look at them a notebook is just exactly like this a laptop exactly like this the only difference is that a notebook is a little bit bigger here notebooks are already discontinued uh, as you can see the word notebook something which is big if uh, just like your notebook your school notebook where you write your notes that's why it's, it was called a notebook then if you look at a laptop now it's quite slim here so in any case laptops sometimes they were also bigger why because they also wanted to include some ventilation so there's a fan which is inside to just cool out to sorry to just cool out your computer so they also needed a cd rom a dvd rom so they went also gain size but nowadays if you check uh, cd roms and dvd roms are being phased out on uh, laptop computers because of the flash disk so they are becoming much smaller in size but you have to be very very careful especially if you want to buy a laptop don't buy a laptop without a fan computers or laptops without a fan it means that you also need an air conditioner so that it can be cooled otherwise if you just work with it like this you don't have six months along the line your computer is down and you cannot you can hardly repair them or if you can repair them laptops are much much expensive to repair expensive to buy and expensive to maintain and repair so make sure if you have one take care of your laptop and uh, also if you have a laptop or before I talk about uh, the battery uh, I'm still talking about the difference so at the end of the day they noted that uh, it's creating a lot of confusion they decided to phase out one of them so the notebook went out and now everything is being called a, a laptop then we also have uh, what we call a sub notebook a sub notebook as you can see those are the small laptops I think we've seen them very small it's actually half size of this some of them they look like a tablet I've got the uh, three here as you can see so we've got the bigger one is actually the laptop and this one is a sub uh, notebook and this one is actually um, a tablet we'll talk about the tablets and it can also be um, what you call this one a PDA personal digital assistant I uh, will still have to talk about that later as you can see so these are the actual sizes of uh, the computers there but if you don't have a desktop computer don't buy a laptop if you buy this one as a second computer or buy it if you have a necessity of being mobile you travel a lot you need a laptop then you can buy it but if you just buy it to just use it at home don't even try to buy this one it will be expensive for nothing one it won't last very very long as compared to a desktop computer or a tower computer like we we're talking about tower computers are very very strong and durable you can stay for them for long why because they are not move they are not mobile they're just fixed you put it under your desk or you put it on top of your desk it's there in the corner nobody touches it nobody leaves it only what you do is switching on your computer and working with it as for a laptop now you have to carry the laptop you have to put it inside your bag you have to run throw it down at times it will fall you're going to disturb 
all these components as you can see this is a very small space here and everything is compacted here inside so you need to take very good care of this device then one advantage of these devices or they are mobile so it means you can carry them to anywhere you like then you can use a battery but then the battery you have to take care of it how do we take care of the battery it means that the battery they're designed to work with a battery not with a charger okay there's a charger there it has got a box here then the cable then it goes straight to the to the walls okay it's designed to work like this but don't work with it while charging first charge your laptop then you leave it until it goes to 100 percent when it is full take it off the the plug then you can start using it it's designed to work with the battery not with electricity if you work with it while it is charging what happens is going is that it's going to disturb or it's going to um, uh, make your battery fat what do you call this one i'm forgetting the term which uh, should be used but okay you're just charging it it's going to get full once it's full and you are still charging you're not even controlling it it's going to get fed then you're going to burn some of the cells inside the battery then you find out that uh, working with your laptop about for about uh, one hour the battery is down 30 minutes 20 minutes it's already complaining power so try to charge it when it's 100 percent you take it off then you start working with it when it's around 15 percent it will let you know can you please charge me then you have to switch it off then you charge it don't charge it while you are working this is how we can keep our battery it will stay for very very long time but if you just charge it working on it charging and working on it even on your phone if you just charge it on whatsapp charging whatsapp with, uh, you just uh, talking to your friends your battery will go down switch off these devices you charge then you switch on you start working so actually this 15 percent is an alert if you continue if you ignore for example this 15 percent when it reaches 10 percent it's going to let you know again i need some charge if you ignore it it's going to automatically switch off because it has to conserve some of the components here which should not run out of power so it's going to run kind of in a safe mode it's going to be working but you cannot use it at 10 percent unless you charge it to 100 percent so make sure you charge it when it goes to 15 percent try to finish whatever you're doing at 11 percent 10 percent just switch it off charge it and you start working again so this is the only way we can use a laptop or any device which uses a battery you can stay for long with it so as you can see they are very powerful in processing very very good they're very powerful uh, small enough to fit easily in a briefcase in a in a um, in a bag in a satchel whatever but when you put it inside a bag or a satchel you must know that inside this device we have what we call a hard disk which is called a hdd it's an abbreviation of hard disk a hard disk is the device which stores some information inside the computer it also holds the operating system inside the computer so this hard disk is hard outside but it's very fragile very very fragile just like an egg so it's like this in outside but inside it's a disk which is a metal disk and it has got a hand which has got what we call a read write head so what happens when you are when you switch on your computer this read write head or this this is going to rotate at 7200 rounds per minute this is the speed of a hard disk so this is a very very sp fast speed 7200 rounds per so not per minute sorry per second rps for per second so this is a very very high speed so what happens now if you just uh, switch off any computer any device you just switch it on off all of a sudden running at this speed this read right head is going to fall 
and it's going to scratch on the hard disk. Today you do it the same. Tomorrow you do the same thing. Next day you do the same. You will find out that after a month, your hard disk is gone. You cannot longer read or write any information to your hard disk. So it's no, try to switch it on. Your computer will not work. So make sure you switch off your computer using the proper uh, using the proper way which is the proper way you click on start shut down just like on my computer here just go to to start then you go to to this button you click on shut down this is the proper way of switching off a computer don't go by the button or just leave it lose power there you're going to disturb your your hard disk besides that uh, vibration one disadvantage of using that's why i was saying a desktop computer or a tower computer lives longer than a laptop why desk any hard disk it doesn't like vibration okay you're going to put your your computer or laptop inside your briefcase or inside your satchel inside a bag you're going to be late you're going to run once you are running it's going to be shaking inside your bag that shaking it can disturb this read right head or it can be scratching little by little you are scratching your hard disk tomorrow you are late just like this maybe stop here it's going to be like this tomorrow maybe you are late again it's going to be scratching here it's going to be scratching here what happens now at the end of the day it will not be able to read the right or write information on your disk just like a cd or a dvd if you scratch it put dust on it scratch it what happens you cannot even read any information that's what happens with the hard disk so make sure when you get home don't throw your bag especially if you know that there is a computer there once you throw it you're scratching the hard disk you are running your late any vibration you're scratching your hard disk so or you may disturb this read right here dear which reads information and writes information onto the disk so the only way you can take care of your your laptop just try to be patient carry it as if you're carrying an egg do you know that uh sorry the way you carry eggs that are uh, favor yeah the way you carry those eggs 24 eggs you're holding them on your hand i think you take very good care of them because you know any anything we if you are anything happens it's going, they are going to break so just do the same thing with your laptop so it's a very good device but very fragile besides being fragile components of a laptop are very very expensive than of a desktop or a tower computer if anything goes wrong okay the keyboard is down buying this keyboard is very expensive buying the hard disk of a laptop is very expensive much expensive than a a, a desktop computer any component which is there is very small and very expensive and don't just give anybody you don't trust to open it make sure that the person who is going to be opening your computer or your laptop is well trained otherwise at times okay you can open it you can give somebody to fix something very small but when you close it you will discover that there are more problems inside the, the laptop so make sure you give the proper technician to fix up your computer okay the next type of computer we have is called a palm top a palm top is actually a handheld computer some they call it a pda pda it actually means personal digital assistant so it means it's an assistant but it's a digital one personal digital assistant okay I'm going to abbreviate this okay assistant so it means a PDA personal digital assistant is going to be assisting you everywhere if you look a long time ago we had those uh, diaries uh, which are manual where you had to write everything inside but at the same time you you could even forget if it is a meeting you can even forget the meeting but now they decided to develop uh, devices such um, called a palm top so if you look at a palm top is something which fits on your palm look at this hand here so this device is inside or it's fitting inside a palm 
that's why it's called a palm top then we also have uh, another device which is uh, it's also a PDA but it also fits in the end you can also use a pen like to write so it wasn't a touch exactly but writing with this screen here so sort of writing with this pen on the screen it was much flexible and we also had these ones another palm top or handheld computer but it has got a keyboard so why did they put keyboard sometimes because some users were complaining okay it's very difficult to write with a pen it's very difficult for example using a touch screen so others preferred a keyboard so they created this very small keyboard which could be used just like a computer so if you look at all these devices okay i'll explain at the end if you look at all these devices they are part of a computer they have functions of a computer but are reduced to small sizes so that you can fit them in your pocket you can be mobile you can do anything you can do on a computer but they are not better than a computer nothing is much better than a desktop or a tower computer especially these small mobile devices okay so we also have uh, another device which is called a tablet computer tablet computers they were created in 2001 by Microsoft uh, one of the um, companies or uh, which is in the market working with computers and if you look at a tablet computer just a small I think we have we have seen these ones they're still in fashion uh, they are actually big they look like a phone but they are very very big they are not meant to be a cell phone they are meant to be small computers where you can take pictures you can take videos and it's actually I think uh, 2014 if I'm not mistaken uh, Apple launched the iPad why was it called an iPad iPad it means idea pad sorry I'm writing with the mouse here it's quite uh, difficult okay it's called an idea pad okay so it means inside you can write your ideas you're going to a meeting you're going to present your ideas there you're going to be presenting something in front of people just going to put your ideas instead of going in front of people with papers on your hand just use that device which is technological and it's much smarter than a paper so it was called an idea pad as you can see along there are also some users who are not comfortable using the touch screen so they thought we just needed some like some keyboards so some of the tablets they brought in some some uh, keyboard like this one is a, it has got a keyboard although you can fold it or some of them you can just connect them behind so it would work just like a computer so it also works with the battery you should take care of the battery and they've got an advantage they don't carry a hard disk now so it means you can uh, vibration is not an issue you can run holding it it's okay as long as it you do sorry as long as you don't drop it it's okay but the main thing which is much fragile here is the screen once you crack this it's down you cannot do anything else so you must take care of your screen which is more sensitive here then how do they store information if they do if they don't use the hard disk they store information using what we call a SD card I think we've seen these are uh, memory cards so it means it carries on a memory card but much bigger I've got a 64 gig 120 gig 200 and something gig 500 gig they are getting bigger and bigger we'll get to that when you get to the topic of storage so you can find out that these devices they don't carry a hard disk but they carry what we call an SD card or a memory card which can be used to store information on the device then we also have another device which is called the smart glasses smart glasses are part of the computers um, and they are used by spies especially by spies as you can see somebody just putting on glasses you may think that uh, these are sun uh, sorry these are eye glasses the guy has got some eye problems and yet no it's actually a computer okay so as you can see it can show you the time it can show you the date and current everything there are buttons here you can press them you can see whatever you want to see some of them they carry cameras here so that uh, like the spies now I'm talking about the spies I think we've seen this in the movies just put a camera there you just go everywhere you can actually hear so the hearing part is actually here 
near your ear. Is there a hook on your ear? You can also listen to the uh, to any sound here. Somebody talking to you. As you can see, this is the actual price. I found something six hundred dollars. It's a little bit. Uh, it's a lot of money. You have to buy them with a purpose, not for fun. This is a lot of money. Okay, as you can see, you can see the temperature, outside temperature, anything you can see. And from the look, like it's, let's look at this uh, lady here. She's wearing the smart glasses. So actually you can see actually a computer. This screen is computerized. This screen is also computerized. And at the same time, you can see something which is in front. So only the person wearing these glasses can see whatever is written there. Others like us if we just look at there for example we won't see anything but her eyes so these are usually used by spies they are very effective okay we also have what we call the smart watches smart watches is something which is uh, a wristwatch but it uses some um, it has some functions of a computer it also uses a memory card even these sunglasses sorry these are uh, smart glasses they also have a memory card which can be inserted inside this these are these what do you call these ones which hold the, the the glasses then this one also carries a it also enters a memory card it also has a camera here you can also use some apps which are here you can also talk and listen at the same time so these are also parts of a computer why do we say they are part of a computer? One, if any device, any technological device can store anything like on memory card or inside that device storage, so it's part of a computer. If you can go on the internet, let me try to write. If you can go on the internet with your device, it means it's part of a computer if you can uh, write text on your device see some pictures on your device it's part of a computer play some music watch some videos these are all functions of a computer so as you can see sorry for the handwriting i'm trying to write with the mouse it's not quite easy and it's actually slippery but these are actually the functions of a computer so that's why we can classify smart watches smart houses smart glasses anything smartphones we can also classify it under a computer tablet computers they also store information so those are under what we call a computer so if you look at this diagram here we have all this started from a big computer we moved on to a laptop we moved on to a tablet we moved on to a smartphone we also moved again to what smart glasses smart watches now we're on smart houses everything is going smart 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 okay at the end of the day everything was going to be smart and we're not going to have any job that's a risk Technology is good, but it's going to kick us out of the society because everything is going to be done by by technology. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've reached to the end of the types of computers. Then we'll be focusing more on the types of computers later, and we'll be talking about the servers. So, in the meantime, we reach to the end. Please, any questions, just send them to my WhatsApp group, to the WhatsApp group, and to the classroom. Thank you very much.